Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we continue our expository study of the Epistle to the Church in Galatia. And our study is titled, A Little Leaven Leaveneth the Whole Lump, as we will be in Galatians chapter 5, covering verses 6 through 9. And this is a two-part study. We want to remind folks of our 24-hour-a-day internet radio station at bbfohioradio.com. With listeners tuning in from all over the world, anytime, day or night, no matter where you are on the planet, if you have internet access, seven days a week for the preaching and teaching of the authorized King James Bible, as well as great music and, on occasion, a commentary piece. This is all free of charge by simply going to bbfohioradio.com and you can use your browser player or you can download an app for your phone. And uh, for those who would like to write, you can send an email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com or send your letter by U.S. Postal to Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662. Worthington, Ohio, 43085. A lot of our most recent letters have been very personal in nature, and we want to assure you that we will not share any personal or confidential information when reading letters uh, on these studies or anywhere else for that matter. We only read letters when portions are general in nature, and uh, so we want you to know your privacy is respected. You can again email us at bbbfohio at yahoo.com or you can send that letter by U.S. Postal to P.O. Box 662 Worthington, Ohio 43085. I, I personally review all correspondence and this information as far as the email and uh, postal address is always available at our website bbfohio.com. Now let's begin part one of our two-part study of Galatians chapter 5, verses 6 through 9, titled, A Little Leaven Leaveneth the Whole Lump. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to read uh, Galatians 5, 6 through 9, and you'll see the passage that says, A Little Leaven Leaveneth the Whole Lump, so we'll come back to the title passage here in just a minute. So if you have your Bibles open, you can read there or up here on the screen. Let's go ahead and read through this. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And we live in a world that will do anything but repent toward God with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother J Chad just mentioned that in his prayer. And it, it's a world that will not recognize the truth. It's not that they can't. There's a difference between can't and won't. And the world will not. And anything outside of the truth avails nothing. Amen. Period. And I think people are under the delusion that they can make it up as they want and it will somehow just work out. That might work when it comes to building something, you know, or, or uh, you can do your job and I've seen people take shortcuts and it's still somehow they work it out. But this is about eternity. This is about where you will spend eternity. That's not a long time that's beyond time. It is. Your future is. Wherever you go after you die, you're there. Amen. Period. Yep. This is serious stuff. And people are so, I don't know what you'd say, uh, glib about it, maybe. Uh, they just, they don't really give it full thought. I mean, how many people have you talked to when you talk about this stuff, you wonder if they've ever even seriously thought about it? They're like animals. 
we love Dan. We love our Shih Tzu Sevi. Uh, Mariah and Stephen came over, like I said last night, and that's the first time Asa had been back to the house since Mariah took him. When she got, Mariah got married, came back from her honeymoon, and took Asa down to Grove City, and that's where Asa's been, and he came back. And to be honest with you, I don't think he was real happy to be there. Aww. It was noisy. There were two other dogs. He, he, I think he liked it when we held him. Because I held him and he just looked at me. It's just so cute. I wish, we, did anybody get a picture of that? He liked the roast beef. Yeah, we gave him a little roast beef. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I held, hold that little Ace. He's as cute as a button. We love those. But you know what? It's different when I'm holding Samuel. Or I'm holding Caroline. Yeah. Or when I held my babies when they were small enough I could hold them. <laughs> There's a difference. And that difference should be not only in how we look at them, but it should be in them, the way they look at the world, the way they think. And I'm, I'm sorry, but there are a lot of people, when I talk to them, I get the feeling I, it's almost like talking to a dog. Yeah. It's like talking to a puppy. They only want you to say, treats. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Treats. Oh, I like Greg. Greg's my friend. Squirrel. Friend of circuses. They don't want you to bring up anything. Now, this is the word. Negative. Yeah. What? It's not negative. It is truth. It is fact. You know, uh, someone walks up to me and says... <clears throat> Barn doors up and Greg. <laughs> I don't look at them and say, quit being so negative. I'm thankful they told me the barn doors open. Amen? Amen. If you don't know what I mean, talk to your mom and dad later. <laughs> For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. What's that telling you? That's telling you that it's not about your opinion and what you think you ought to do to be saved. It's not what you do or you don't do as far as works go. And it doesn't matter what your opinion is of that. Amen. It avails nothing if you add anything to the gospel. Salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. You could go to heaven and brag about, I did this to be here. So anything that, in, when anyone presents the gospel, or anyone thinks about the gospel, when I ask them and they, and they answer about the gospel, and it has anything to do with them doing some work to be saved, I know I'm talking to somebody who is either unsaved or has been totally deceived since they've been saved. Because salvation is not of works. But, we must interject here that true faith includes repentance. And to repent is not a work. I'm interjecting this because every week we put out the messages and I'm getting these fakes who will then say, you're of the devil, Greg Miller. You're adding works to salvation. You're saying to repent is a work. Or you're saying to be saved you must repent and then repent is a work. They all say that. All these letters I'm getting, emails, posts, I want to say it very clearly. If the Bible is true, is the Bible true? Yes. Repentance is not a work. And anybody who tells you that repentance is a work is of the devil. Amen. And all those people writing me these letters are tools of Satan. I'll probably repeat that at some time. I think I might have even made a meme about that. Those preaching today's false gospel of lasciviousness pervert the gospel by claiming that repentance is a work. Why I'm bringing that up because they, you will be accused if you preach the biblical gospel today, you will be accused of adding works to salvation. And we know that works avail nothing. Amen? Amen. So if you're going to preach repentance, you'd better know your Bible and know that repentance is not a work. And this claim by those who preach the gospel of lasciviousness, what's that mean? 
Jude speaks of those who turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. How do they do that? They say that you don't need to worry about the fact you're a sinner. This has nothing to do with your sin. That God just came to save you from unbelief. We're going to see the gospel is presented plainly and never mentions that Jesus came to die for your unbelief. Amen. It says Christ died for your sins. Amen. So, getting back to this, to claim that repentance is a work, that is a lie. Amen. Period. I want to show you again. We went over this in our previous message on repentance unto salvation. In 2 Timothy 2.25, read that with me. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Now, read this again, but only read the orange letters. God will give them repentance. That says God does what? Gives. gives. If someone gives you something, that makes it a? Yes. Not works. Amen. The Bible is true, and the Bible says repentance is not a work. Amen. It says it again back in Acts 5.31, Him hath God exalted, talking about Jesus Christ, with His right hand to be a prince and a savior. Why? For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Amen. Without repentance, there is no forgiveness. Amen. I'm here to tell you there are a lot of unsaved people people professing to be Christians today. And a lot of the people that we know, listen, I can't judge individuals, I can't tell you who's what, but I just know generally speaking as a fact, a lot of the people who profess Christ, who are living like the devil, are doing so because they've never been saved. Amen. They never repented of sin, they never repented of what they are, they only had a a mind knowledge of the facts of the gospel. And by the way, these perverts who teach this false gospel without repentance all run away from the Bible to corrupt lexicons to get a definition of repentance that says it's only a matter of the mind. Mm -hmm. Change of mind. And in Genesis 6, 6, the first mention of repentance involves God and He was grieved at His heart. You cannot be saved without a change of heart. And if you've approached God with the facts of the gospel and just said, well, I believe that, oh, you're saved. The Bible doesn't say such a thing. The Bible says it's in the heart where this takes place, not in the head. Mm -hmm. There are people who will tell you... I, I've had people tell me, I believe that Jesus was on the earth and He died and I, it's probably likely that He was resurrected, but I just have no interest in it. Praise God, because at least that person is aware of their lost condition. Amen. But there are a lot of other Christians, and we were talking uh, earlier, that they call themselves gay Christians. Can God save a sodomite? Yes. yes, He can. But will that sodomite then identify himself with his sin afterwards? No. 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 You see, the difference is a sodomite who's saved no longer wants to be a sodomite. And if they do fall into that sin again, they will not do so with pride and they will feel conviction over that. They will not have wanted to do that. They are struggling against that and God will deal with them if they continue in that sin. 1 Corinthians 3 says He'll even destroy them. Amen. Verses 16 17, look it up. But the, that, that is a sodomite who's saved even if you see them struggling with their sin. But if a sodomite claims to be saved but calls himself a gay Christian and takes pride in their sin, that is the kind of Christian that this fake gospel without repentance is producing. Mm -hmm. Why not be a gay Christian? You don't need to repent of your sins to be saved. So just be a gay Christian. Sodomize your way to heaven. Don't look at me like that. If they really believe what they're preaching, they should have signs out there on the gay pride parade saying, sodomize your way to heaven. Amen. They don't because they know good and well that what they're teaching is a lie. Amen. Amen. They should be handing out gospel tracts. There's, you can continue to sin. Don't worry about it. Just put in your mind the facts of the gospel. 
And there are some who really get down to the point where they almost preach it like that. Here's the result of this lie. They define repent as only a change of the mind. They claim repentance as a work, which it's not. They preach a gospel without repentance. Now watch this. They produce unrepentant converts in quotes. They fill churches with unrepentant professors. They go soft in preaching on the sins of the unrepentant eternally secure. The result is they end up with apostasy as these unsaved Christians, in quotes, destroy the work of God. And that's what's being... You wonder why churches that 50 years ago used to preach the gospel and now they have some queer in the pulpit and they don't ever preach against Sodom and they, they have people living in sin and sometimes these churches have men with men and women with women in the pews holding hands and some of them even put them together in the church directories that they create. You want to know why they did that? Because they took repentance out. And so they have a church filled with unrepentant sinners professing salvation and they fill the pews with those unsaved people and then those unsaved people then elect their leaders so their leaders become like them and then the leaders pick a preacher just like them. Next thing you know, it's just the church of Sodom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that's what we have today. Churches that 50 years ago, churches 25 years ago that were preaching the gospel, they are churches of Sodom today. And they will not, you could go there for six months and you will not hear them preach on Sodom. You won't hear them preach on hell. You won't hear them preach anything that might offend somebody. And, if, and they don't preach the biblical gospel either along the way. And there you go. This is the pit of unrepentance. These people are sure about themselves. These people have full confidence in themselves. These people have no fear as they walk right into the pit. That is Christianity today. Amen. Yeah. Hey, at least they look good. They, if you went to their churches today, they would confidently boast in their salvation while unrepentant about sin. There's actually a, another one that I didn't show. Someone has shown people going off a cliff into flames. And that's the only thing wrong with this picture is it ought to show the flames in the pit. Craig, is this the, their kind of repentance? The kind of repentance like um, <coughs> Judas had, he was sorry he got caught? To some extent, but some of them aren't even sorry about that. I mean, you think about it, a lot of these people haven't been caught. They're just in sin and proud of it. Okay. Like Sodom. That's saying something. That means they're worse than Judas. Mm. <laughs> worse than Esau. And these end times are decidedly marked by this trait of anti-biblical error. Amen. That's what, that's what the, the, the day we live in that's the key that you can see all around you is this anti-biblical error. Look what he says in verse 7. Read that. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Now, to some extent, and in some of these churches, some of the people who are going along with this are saved. Yeah. But they're deceived. And again, we can't know who's what. Some are not saved. Some have never been saved. Some are saved, but deceived. That's why you don't base anything you believe on people. Amen. I don't care how godly you think they are and how wonderful they've lived their lives and all that. You are to go by the book. Amen. Amen. And these people started out as a church, as a whole. Galatians started out right. They did run well. But it says, look at that. Who? Since the very beginning, churches have been plagued with people promoting error. Who did hinder you? Amen. You better be very careful about who you're listening to. Amen. Now, there's some truth to this uh, of listening to preachers and you say, well, I don't agree with everything, but you, you, know, you eat the meat and spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. Folks, a lot of these guys are meatless, bone 
feeders. That's all they give you is bone. So you, you start swallowing anything they preach, you choke on it. I call them the creeps. The church and the pulpits are filled with creeps. Jude 1.4 says, that For there are certain men who crept in unawares. Creeps. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Now watch what they did. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because He, this Jesus Christ, He came and He died for your sins. And when you make the gospel antinomian and no reference to sins and no reference to repentance of sins you have just turned the grace of God which is able to save you from your sins and able to give you the power over sin it, we don't preach sinless perfection that doesn't mean we preach well let's just have at it Whoa. sin boldly that's what Martin Luther taught there are a bunch of guys who taught that. And there's a bunch of people teaching it today. Because there's no need for you to repent. Sin boldly. That's turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. That's saying that you can be a male whore, you can be a female whore, and go to heaven fine as long as you have in your mind the facts of the gospel. God's grace belongs to those who will repent toward God with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you will do that, that means you've received the Word of God. And when you receive the Word of God as the Word of God, He gives you repentance and faith. And actually faith itself involves repentance. And so you are given repentance and given faith. As faith comes, I go through this every once in a while, faith cometh by what? And hearing by the word of God. So you didn't do it. Amen. Didn't come from you. Nope. That's why it's called a faith. That's why it's called a, a, a gift. If, if it weren't by God's word coming into you, it wouldn't be faith. It would be a work. It'd be something you do. The only thing you do is not you doing, it's you being open and receiving. Now you can't call receiving a work. Therefore, there's no, there's no way for anyone to ever get gifts because what do you do? You receive gifts. So if receiving the Word of God were a work, then we could never ever get gifts of any sort because you have to receive it in order to make it a gift. And so when you receive the Word of God as God's Word, then that produces in you repentance and faith. And so you can't boast about it. How and where did this lax attitude come from? It's not from Scripture or the Spirit of God. This lax attitude saying, oh, you don't need to repent, didn't come from God. Not only have we quoted the Scriptures where it says it does come from God, but look, Galatians 5.8, read that. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. That didn't come from God. This gospel without repentance isn't from God, it's from Satan. Amen. When you go back to Galatians, or to Genesis chapter 3, Satan took the truth and twisted it. Amen. He didn't come up with a total new message. He took the truth and he did tweaked it a little bit. Half, God said, ye shall not surely die. All you have to do is tweak it a little bit. Take the gospel and teach that it doesn't involve sin, it's just your unbelief. And you just turn it into a false gospel. There is no such thing as a spirit-filled Christian who does not care about sound doctrine. And folks, you have got to get that through your head. I still hear Christians who otherwise know better, but they'll boast about the fact that somebody you know they know just loves everybody and that you know they don't get into doctrine. Somebody was telling me that uh, they were bragging about a, a preacher they heard. They said, oh, I just love to hear him preach. You know, they don't get into that doctrine. Wow. <laughs> it's 
so they don't teach. They don't teach. Yeah, that's what doctrine is. It's the teachings. It's the yeah. what are you doing? They're just up there blowing hot air. It's just emotionalism. It's just to make you feel good. It's saying whatever you want to hear. It's itching ears Amen. being scratched. <laughs> If someone has an attitude that doctrine doesn't matter, they have a, they have a foul spirit. Amen. The entire charismatic movement is a foul spirit. Amen. You will not go under a charismatic preacher and find him caring about sound doctrine. And they base everything they believe on experience, not on sound doctrine. And they call themselves, they love, and that's the thing is it's the total opposite. A spirit-filled Christian, you know another thing they won't do? They won't call themselves a spirit-filled Christian. A spirit-filled Christian is humble. They don't boast. But these, these fakes, these charismatics will run around calling themselves, I'm a Holy Ghost baptized spirit-filled. I'm going to slay you. You know, you're like, where's the humility? <laughs> the spirit-filled Christian is to be humble. And it's like you say, you know, if you if your if your horn deserves to be tooted, you shouldn't have to toot it. Right. I mean, if your horn deserves tooted, other people are going to toot it, and a spirit-filled Christian ain't going to toot its own horn. Amen. But the so-called charismatic movement today—that's all they're about. Toot, toot. You know, that's all they're about. They call their conferences the fire baptized Holy Ghost. You know. And they, Brother so and so is anointed with the Holy Ghost and he's going to bring down the fire. You know, and you. Why don't you just shut up and do it? I'd be impressed if I saw it, not if I heard you brag about doing it. And all you do is get a bunch of people together and, and sweat. If you don't produce, you don't do anything. Just take old brother so and so and that fire baptized Holy Ghost filled preacher and go to children's hospital. Yeah. Amen. Demonstrate your power there in the burn unit. The same, you don't even have to go that far with it. When you hear them preach and you hear them, they'll boast about not caring about doctrine. Yeah. He's spirit filled, he's full of the flesh. All it takes is a little error mixed with a little false doctrine. Yeah. A little. Doesn't take much. That's why it says, read it, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Yep. Just a little. I don't make bread. Any of you here made bread? Amen. Some of you had bread makers or whatever? Amen. Yeah, it, it doesn't take, what is it, a little packet of leaven? And you put it uh, yeah, yeast, and you put it in a big bowl with the dough and everything, but it just takes a little bit of a sprinkle of that, and it does the job, right? Amen. Well, that's what sin and false doctrine are. When the Bible refers to leaven, it's talking about sin and false doctrine. And so every time you read your Bible and you see leaven mentioned, you need to understand that. You go back to the Passover in the book, in the book of Exodus. Why did they go around finding, they found all the leaven and got it out of the house. Picture of sin and, and false doctrine. A false gospel. And the church today has had just a little bit of leaven creep in and destroy many gospel ministries. And I want to tell you this, you look at these guys who preach against repentance, some of them are in prison. And some of them have lost their ministries, lost their families. Their churches are racked with adultery and sodomy. It's the fruit. For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, Tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.